It's me, people. Another fun one for you today. We're gonna be building a portable boardwalk for friends of the park. Let's get ripped. Friends of McGregor Park. This is uh, my friend Stu. Hey, Stu. Stu's president of Friends of McGregor Park. And what we do is we try. And to... you're Marshall. I'm Marshall. Yeah. My neighbor. We're neighbors to Sandy and her husband, and they own the, the Mackenzies owned all the land all the way around here. So uh, since time immemorial, I think. 1875. Wow! Right. Wow! Woo! So. so what Friends of McGregor Park does is uh, we try to help the park out and it, we're all volunteers and most of the provincial parks in Ontario have friends of groups that help the park out. So we want to protect the small area of dunes in McGregor Park. Blueprint they gave us for this project called for pressure treated lumber. But we didn't like the idea of using pressure treated lumber for a couple of reasons. But one is because it's got chemicals in it. So we realized that we could come to the Mackenzie's here and we could get rough cut cedar, which is better for the environment, and the wood comes right from this local area. Actually, just a couple of kilometers from here is where this wood. Local wood. Absolutely, local wood. And it's so, a good price. And it was and it was cheaper than the, the, the wood that we would have bought at the lumber yard, which could have come from who knows where, right? Yeah. So For, for me, the toxic, like going through cancer since, for the last three years, and you've had some health issues, yeah. and we're all getting older. That toxic chemicals is key for me. Like that's important. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put, I don't want to breathe in that crap. So, so what are you building? So yeah, so what we're using here is a recycled fire hose to hold these together. And, and they're gonna lay out on the beach. And we're, we're, we're using these little blocks to keep uh, inch and a half spaces. So it's like really a portable boardwalk. A portable boardwalk? Yeah. Oh, that is cool. And so you uh, just roll it out? Roll it up, roll it up. Yeah. You gotta carry it well, in We're doing 10 foot sections. So do you like use a four wheeler to get it in or do you, do you carry it in? Um, yeah, we're gonna take it down to the beach itself and then uh, people younger than us will take it off the trailer and uh, roll it out on the beach. We're, we're gonna use high school, school kids. Nice. Which is a good project nice. so they can get, be involved with the project That's too. That's a great project. From, from What's okay, the so, idea behind well, it? Well, once these late, like this is gonna be upside down, you're gonna watch how we're putting it together. Okay. Once they're in place, then the sand kind of fills in between the boards. Okay, and so it's like dunes, like on, yeah, it's right, right on the beach or? Right on the beach. So it's sand right dunes. Right now when people park their car and they walk to the beach, they don't, they'll just walk helter skelter anywhere. We want to protect the dunes. They, these guys actually oh. plant the dune grasses and everything. So we want designated walkways and then areas where they take shortcuts, we'll probably rope them off so that they have to follow them. But these give them an idea that this is where you're supposed to walk. And also and somebody that's in a wheelchair could actually go up to the edge of the beach. Oh, because nice. Because they're on these, right? So nice. it's, it's quite good. All we're doing now is measuring out where we want to put the hose, the old uh, fire hose. So instead of the old fire hose being thrown out, we're able to use it for the back of these boardwalks. So is this a 10 foot? Or no, this, this is, is going to be when we're done. Oh, okay. We have to add another we, five the cable boards. Yeah. Quite long enough, right? <laughs> oh, I've been there, done that. Do you need some help with so anything? What we're using here is a flooring nailer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> these are, these so this is the bottom. Like this is the bottom of the uh That's right. Board that's correct. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And this okay, is yeah, old fire hose. That's the old fire hose that they'll be throwing out normally. This is a stapler for putting in hardwood in the house. In house. Okay. That's a heavy duty one. I got an air nailer, but it's nothing like that. These are the staples. They're really uh, heavy duty deals. So uh, they're not gonna pull out too quick. This is, uh, 
<laughs> you just uh, have the very first one. This one is screwed down to just hold to it hold all it in place. Yeah. To hold, hold the boards in place so you're, so you don't go wonky. That's right. wonky. That's right. How many of these are you making? Well, we've got five. This is the sixth one. We're making Woo 10 of them. We need, we're going to make a hundred feet. That's what we brought the material for. Oh, nice. And it's going to be more than enough for what we need. Okay. Sandy, you want to hit her? Sure. <laughs> well, there not, we go. Not quite that hard, but. Yeah. <laughs> There's a knack to it. The way this thing works is if, if this was hardwood flooring, right. and, and this was the, the next board you're putting on, this little spot here sits right on the edge of the hardwood flooring. So then when you, it actually knocks the piece of wood tight to the last piece of wood, oh, and the staple okay. goes right in where the tongue is on the, on the oh, right? on the side. And then it holds it together. <laughs> that, that's how it's it. designed, this nailer. We're using it for this because it's gonna work. I've been thinking about making my own flooring, like just, uh, it can be distressed, like, uh, Go ahead. So this is a good practice for me. Uh, So when are you doing this? Well, we're not sure yet, but we'll let okay. you know so yeah, you can come to know. the beach and film that, right? That would be awesome. We haven't got a date picked quite yet. Although it might be today. <laughs> well, we're probably going to deliver them today. Yeah. But I don't know if we're going to put in there. It's good for people yeah, to see what's going is. on. And it lets people and the know what and... the people are, are thinking about the environment and doing things. Sue's really the... the the uh, ringleader of all this stuff. Oh my gosh. Well, well, here's what they do. They don't actually eat the peanut right now. They take the peanut and they hide it. And, oh. and then they keep it for another rainy day or a cold day. That's what they do. Look at how pretty he is. They're fantastic, aren't they? Can you tell the difference between the male and female? Only if they're singing. Oh. Yeah, that's right. The only way I can tell. They all make the little chickadee call, okay. but then they have another call that they do where they, they, it's a plaintive whistle. It's kind of like a... And they make that little whistle. Only the males do that. Oh. But otherwise, you can't tell the difference. The females make their choice for mate by their, the male song. So I've been practicing my singing for quite a bit now. So this <laughs> just in case, eh? Just in case it comes in you handy. Better, you better feed these chickadees oh. here. You have a shot at the field. Sometimes they're apprehensive to fly to me. It's not that they're afraid of me. They're looking around to make sure there's no predators around because there's predatory birds, that, you know, like sharp-shinned hawks and stuff that will eat them, yeah. right? So they're, they're very cautious about flying out in the open. Yeah, the chickadees don't like me. If you like this video, I think you're gonna like this one. Whoop. For some free stuff, clickety click the link in the description below. Love you, bye.